G'day, long time no see. I've been absent for a little while, but now I'm back again. I've got some new ukuleles and I've got a new recording setup. The ukulele here I'm here to talk about is my Scott Wise tenor solo. And uh, I bet you really, really want to have a look, so let me bring it up. Here we go. Let's see if you can see the grain there. Some beautiful figured Tasmanian blackwood. Very simply and very tastefully done. Let's give you the shot, the shot at the end. Now Scott's got two tenor models. He's got a traditional 12 fret neck model that's strung re-entrant. And this is the solo model, which has a 14 fret neck and is strung low G. Now my particular ukulele, I've had Scott set up for me to be tuned E, A, C sharp, F sharp. Three semitones lower than standard. Uh, now the solo tenor has its unique sound to start with. And it's certainly even more unique now that it's been detuned three semitones. So let me play it for you. Great sustain, great action, easy to play, really very, very good intonation. Okay, let me play something else. There we go. Now, you're going to hear a lot more from this ukulele in the future, so that's just my quick introduction to my Scott Wise tenor solo. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about the recording setup. I'm recording all of this on my Apple MacBook Pro Retina, and the program I'm recording this in is Photo Booth. I'm simply using the inbuilt dual microphones of the Apple MacBook. Okay, now in the future I will do recordings with external microphones and they probably will sound a little bit better too, but right at the moment this is just a test of the Apple MacBook Pro as it stands using the software that comes with the computer. Now, I'll tell you quickly, in the, in the microphone sound preference panel, there's one thing I have done about this this setup, I have turned off the ambient noise reduction. Probably works great for some things, but it doesn't seem to work well for the ukulele. So look, I've turned that off, 
and also there's a manual level set for the microphone and I've adjusted that. I've pulled up the control panel, oh, there's a little display going left to right, little, little lights <laughs> and you basically talk and you play and you want to see the, a good strong signal but you don't want it to go all the way up to the end and crash in through the end. So you want, you want the nice range of movement in the lights but not completely to the end. And set that manually and then open up Photo Booth. Now, once I'm done with Photo Booth, I am going to export this off to GarageBand software that comes with the computer. I'm going to add compressors, maybe a little EQing. I don't think I'm going to add reverb to this particular track because I think there's enough room, room reverb. Then I'm going to take it from GarageBand, I'm going to save it to the desktop and I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Now, this, is, this can be done, but there's a slight trick to it. There's a step you have to go through first. Photo Booth, great little program it is, is a very simple program and it doesn't have good export features. You cannot export straight from Photo Booth in a form you can import into GarageBand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export from Photo Booth to iPhoto. Now, you'll see a little control panel little symbol the bottom right corner of the photo booth screen and in there there'll be an option to say export to iPhoto so that's what you do you export it to iPhoto and iPhoto has an excellent export features and preferences so basically what you then do is you produce yourself an MPEG file in photo booth now it's up to you to decide how large or small you want it to be depending on what quality you want and how big a file you're prepared to live with. I'll, produce, I'll use a fairly high quality file, but not the absolute highest quality. Uh, I will export from iPhoto an MPEG file to the desktop. Now, again, you can't simply import this straight into GarageBand. You have to do another step first. What you do is you open up GarageBand and you start a new project in GarageBand. Um, set that up, name it, put in the basic preferences and then once you have that open the, you then take your MPEG file which you have you on your desktop or wherever you want it and you drag it on to GarageBand then you can open up the sound preferences in GarageBand and work on it now that's a, another topic for another day so I won't discuss that right here and now so and once you're done with it in GarageBand you again save it to the desktop and uh, upload it to YouTube Thank you for listening to my review. I hope you enjoyed it.